Hey everyone, Chant here and welcome to my channel. This is uh, video 9 of the CBS practice exam. So this one is actually, I want to say out of all the ones I've done, this is going to be by far one of my favorites. And the reason is because of the topic of the question itself today, right? We're going to do five questions like any other video, but today a number of the questions, I think around three of them, are focused more on logic base. It's not necessarily just are you able to solve the problem, but what you can derive from the presented information. Other than that though, we're going to start off with the first problem and I think the second problem as well is just solving the problem and then we're going to move on to the logic problem. So let's just talk about the first problem. This one is problem number 41 I believe. Now, Abby drives 18 miles round trip. If her daily trip is rounded to the nearest 5 mile, which of the following is the best estimate for the total number of miles driven in 5 days? So. This can be a little tricky because normally when we're rounding, right, we're rounding basically to the nearest whole number or occasionally we're rounding to the nearest, you know, tens, hundreds, thousands. It's really rare that I've seen where they say round to the nearest five miles. And of course, if you really want to push yourself, you can always say round to the nearest three miles and near six miles whatsoever. But the idea is that rounding to the nearest however many miles is basically a multiple of that mile. So in this case, if you're talking about rounding to the nearest five miles, the two ones that you really need to think about is what happens if you're rounding up and what happens if you're rounding down, right? So if you're rounding up, you're rounding up to the nearest five, right? Whatever ending of five is, blah, blah, blah. Five, right? And you could be rounding down as well, or if you're past five, rounding up, right? The nearest zero or the nearest 10. So these are the two potential options. So when you're thinking about this, and this one says round to the nearest five, then you're looking at this already, and then you're seeing which potential answer is available. If it ends in five or it ends in zero, then okay, that's a possibility. Everything else out the window, right? So let's look at this really quickly. Fairly simple. You have 18 miles around trip, right? And then you're gonna do it for five days. So the best way to go about it is, I mean, you can definitely do the round this and multiply, or you can multiply around. Chances are you'll be able to find the answer. So if we do this one, 18 times five, that's zero, four right there, that's 90, right? So that would be the actual answer. But since we're rounding, let's just, we could uh, round this one, right? So let's just say this rounds up, that's 20. Right, 20 times five, and what is that? That is 100. Now, if you look at the possible answer, this one would be the actual answer, but then the problem with these kind of wording and these kind of problems are they want the best estimate. Chances are they actually don't want you to get the accurate answer, which makes no sense to me and infuriates me to no end. Then you go to the next best thing, right? The next best thing I believe is 100, and it is one of the potential multiple choice. I don't have it written down there, but if I remember correctly, the problem, yeah, 100 is one of the answer and most likely is the answer they are looking for. Now, there are other ones that I think there was one that was ended like five because uh, it was like 125. Be very careful of that. Just because you know that it ends in these two doesn't mean that the first one you see is the answer, right? You got to make sure you have to reason through it, work your way around it, and there it is. This is the answer for this problem. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so for this second problem, I actually remember this problem because when I first did it, I thought it was the stupidest problem ever. The reason for that is because guess what? Yes, it does give you this little instruction about rounding to the nearest one tenth, and these are all in seconds. But the idea that I always find is that when you're trying to estimate, you're trying to save time, but you are trying to get as accurate as possible. So if you're in a situation where it's super easy to get the most accurate answer, why the hell are you wasting time estimating, especially with some freaking hidden criteria, right? So for this problem, it annoys me, but let's just do this. So what happens is that you have Carrie who ran the same distance in four different races and each and every one of those races has different times. So 18.04, 21.39, 12.99, and then 14.14. If the individual times are rather the nearest one tenth, what is the estimate of the total time? So here is where it gets a little tricky. Since it says to round it to the nearest one tenth and then estimate the total time, so you have to go through that specific order. Because guess what? When you do it the other way, it's stupid. So here, let's look at this really quickly. All right, so if I were to add it with its rounded to the nearest one tenth, one tenth is right there, right? So it's gonna be, the first one is 18 because it's gonna be 0, .0 and this one rounds down. The next one is gonna be 21.4 
and the next one's gonna be 13, and the next one's gonna be 14.1, right? Then you can bring it all down, do your little math, that's 12, what, that's uh, 15, 16, one right there, and that's gonna be uh, six right there, 66.5. So this would be the answer, and this is the correct answer that they really want you to do. So that's if you follow their direction precisely, right? Ignoring the whole goal of estimating whatsoever, you round everything to the nearest one tenth and you add them all together and you get your answer, which is B, which is absolutely what they are expecting. Now, the reason this problem pissed me off, and this is just going extra, is if you add them all, right, 21.39, and then you have your 12.99, and then you have your 14.14, and then we're just gonna add it all really quickly. That's 18, 22, 6, 2 right there. That's gonna be what? five, one right there, that's gonna be a 12, 16, one right there, and then of course that's gonna be what, six right there. Notice this, 66, five, six, right? If you were to round this to the nearest one tenth, technically, it will be this one. And if we look at this and just think about the idea of estimate to get as accurate as possible, it only makes sense that A should be the one that we strive for. But that's the, that's the I guess you could say, the chaos, the annoyance of it. Follow it exactly, get the right answer, ignore the fact that it defeats the purpose of this problem, just so you can get the score for this particular CBEST exam question. All right, so this is problem number 343, right? And these are one of the three problems that is by far my favorite. The reason for that is because this is more logic based, right? You're trying to figure out what information you're given and what you can use to or interpret from that information. The other thing is that this is a slightly different way of approaching problems. Rather than just trying to find and solve this specific answer, this approach is more of what can I do to break it? Try to be as creative as possible to violate any one of these statements. Because the idea is they give you two things. Grocery store is three miles away from the house. The house is four miles away from the highway. Now, from those two pieces of information, right, which of these can you definitively conclude, right? Everything else, if you can find a way to break it, then that's not the one you're looking for. So let's look at this really quickly. All right, so we know these two information. The first statement, the store is no more than three miles away from the highway. How do we know that, right? There is a house. We know that the store is three miles away from the house, and we know that the, the highway is four miles away from the house or the house is four miles away from the hi highway, right? How do we know definitively that it's no more than three miles away from the highway? Because guess what? They could be in any angle and all of a sudden they violate the three miles. So boom, this one doesn't work, right? Store is no more than one mile away from the highway. Well, <laughs> yeah, good luck with that, right? Because I mean, just thinking about what we can do. Let's just say, uh, I don't really have much room, but let's just say there's a house right here, and then you have your highway, and then you have your grocery store. I don't know what, the grocery store. Boom, right? And then of course it could go anywhere. All we know that from the house to the grocery store is gonna be three miles somehow. From the house to the highway is four miles somehow. And it doesn't have to be a straight line because this is just the only space I have, right? It could be at different odd angles. But at this point, we can play around with it and see what we can violate. If they're gonna assume the store is no more than one mile away from the highway, boom, just like that, this picture destroys that statement. So, gone, okay? Now, store is no more than seven miles away from the highway. Potentially, because I mean, even in the exact straight line, we have three and four, so that's seven, so it can't be more than seven, right? Let's just hold on to that, see if we can find a way to break it. If not, move on and see if we can break the others, right? Store is exactly three miles away from the highway. Uh, not necessarily, because even from that picture alone, boom, doesn't work, right? And exactly four miles away from the highway, doesn't work. So just like that alone, we unconditionally, we broke it completely, no recovery of A, B, D, and E, so we know now the only possible answer is C. So that's how we should approach these kind of problems. Try to break all the other possibilities and choose the remainder. So let's look at another one. All right, so let's talk about this problem right here. Very similar to the previous problem. This one has a little more condition, but other than that, it's exactly the same. 
If the distance from the home is greater than 10 miles, Matt drives. If the distance is greater than 2 miles and less than 10 miles, Matt takes the bicycle. If the distance is less than 2 miles, then Matt walks, right? So those are the three potential possibilities, given information. They, now, they tell you that Matt is visiting, I think, his friend named Zachary. He rode his bike. So that tells us a great deal, right? Which of the statement is true? Well, we know that he's riding his bike. So the only statement that really matters to us is this second one right here, right? If the distance is greater than two miles and less than 10 miles, Matt rides his bicycle. So if we look at each and every one of these potential statements, we can start ruling out things because it doesn't meet this criteria. So let's just look at this really quickly. The first one, Matt home is one mile away from the destination from Zach Zachary's apartment, I think. Less than one mile, what would he have done if it was less than one mile? Clearly, in this case, he would have walked because anything less than two miles, he would have walked. So that one's not it, right? Is within two miles means, again, less than two miles, he would have walked. Seven miles from Matt's home. All right, seven is greater than two, good. He's not gonna be walking anymore. And is less than 10, so he doesn't drive either. So this is a possibility. Right? Let's look at and make sure the other ones, right? At least 10 miles. That's not good, right? Because at least 10 mile means 10 is the smallest number and everything else is bigger. Well, if that's the case, right? If it is greater than 10 miles, well, guess what? That means he is going to be driving. So this one goes away. And the last one, round trip is greater than 20 miles. Well, I mean, that's just a fancy way of saying that is <laughs> the same statement as D. So this one goes away as well. So the only one that really makes sense is C at this point. Once again, a logic question. Make sure you destroy, get rid of all possible options and see what's left. That's most likely the one that's the correct answer. Let's look at one more. All right, so problem number 45. This is the third problem of the whole logic reasoning kind of problem, right? We have our practice on Saturday. So this is a softball practice, right? And they give you conditions on when they will not be practicing. If it rains, then the softball practice will be canceled and they have no practice every third Saturday of the month. Now, with this criteria, all we have to go by is if it's Saturday right now, for in, in, in terms of that problem, right? And there's no practice, which of the following is true? And then you have each and every one of these. Understand that I've cut out a lot of words because I feel like those are all unnecessary filler words. This is the core of the problem, right? So you have your options. It is raining, it is a third Saturday, it is raining and a third Saturday, it is raining or a third Saturday, or a softball game is on a third Saturday. I, that never really made sense to me, I guess. I mean, if you really want to stretch it that they're playing a game instead of practicing and that's why there's no practice, there's nothing in here that would say that that's exactly the situation. So I think E is sort of just a throwaway answer just to put it in there and maybe some people will fall for it. I would say just get rid of E. Just like that, right? Now, since we know that it's Saturday and there's no practice, and we know these are the criteria of when practice is canceled, we have to figure out which one is exactly true. Not could potentially be true, but is exactly true. So, A, it is raining. Could be, right? Because that would meet the first criteria, but there's also the possibility that there's no practice every third Saturday, and since we just know it's a Saturday, we don't know if it's the third one or not, Right? It could be that it just happens to be a third Saturday. So we cannot say for certain A is the answer. So actually, that goes away, right? We can't say that statement with definitive, I guess, confidence, right? B, the same kind of reasoning apply. It is a third Saturday. Yes, if it was a third Saturday, there would be no practice. But it could be that it was actually raining that day. And that's why there's no practice. We don't know, right? So in that case, this wouldn't work either. Now we're down to two. These two are very similar with only a slight difference, right? It is raining and a third Saturday, right? If it's raining and it's a third Saturday, yes, for certain, the practice will be canceled, right? If it is raining or a third Saturday, then yes, for certain, guess what? Practice is canceled. But guess what? For practice to be canceled, it doesn't need to meet both. 
that it only needs to meet one of the criteria, right? It doesn't say that it has to be raining and it has to be a third Saturday for the practice to be canceled. It's one or the other. So in this case, notice the slight difference, right? One of them is an and, meaning that both requirement is necessary, whereas the other one is an or, meaning one of these requirement is necessary. So in this case, right, we would choose or. Because there's no guarantee that just because the practice is canceled that both of these are happening. It just means that we know one of these guys are happening. And if you are more interested in the whole and or logic, I did make an entire video about that, the truth table and all that stuff. It's pretty, it's really fascinating just thinking about the subtle difference, but it actually makes a huge difference in terms of meaning. But in this case, yes, it's or. Because we don't know which of the statement are the criteria it meets, but then one of them did in fact happen. That's why there is no practice on Saturday. So there you go. That's another logic question. All right. So that's video nine of the C best practice exam. So we're getting there. We're almost done. The next video will be our last video. Now it's bittersweet. Yes, I understand. It is kind of tiring just to go through these kind of practice exams. There's no rhyme or reason in many of them. As I mentioned, they are just covering a range of topics that the C best practice exam just sort of hope you know. Some of them I feel like are somewhat useful. Some of them I feel like are a waste of your time, right? So Anyways, there it is. This is by far, once again, my favorite practice logic because I feel like the whole idea of logic, reasoning out, getting information, knowing what to do with those information is so much more important than just can you solve this problem? Can you do the addition, the subtraction, multiplication, and division, right? They're important as well, but I feel like at this certain point, right, in terms of life skill, useful skills, especially in teaching, right, to logically reason something out, right, is so much more applicable than just simple calculation. All right. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video, the final video of the CBS exam. And then we're going to go over a wide range of topics that we would just find for fun, right? Anyways, see you next time.